Well, we're back in Italy where we were just three weeks ago for super middleweight action as Ivan Zuko made a knockout statement on the world stage. A stunning victory to claim his first international title in a division where Italian fighters have enjoyed much success down the years. That's cool, I can speed it up, no problem. And tonight we're in Milan for another huge clash in the 168 pound division as Italy's two top super middleweights do battle in front of a sold out Allianz Cloud Arena. Can Giovanni De Carolis big up, dig up one last big performance or will the night belong to Daniel Scardina, the man they call King Toretto? Please welcome Daniele King Toretto Scardina! Right. What a response. Scardina here looks to be getting stronger. Absolutely good boxing from Scardina. Adrenaline sensing that Scardina is getting on top at the end of this round. Solid jab. That's the difference in power. And that is a really good finish from Scardina. Mike up. Yes, Daniel Scardina, who has become the flag bearer for Italian boxing in recent years, puts his unbeaten record on the line against domestic rival Giovanni De Carolis in front of his hometown fans. A fantastic looking European title fight on the undercard of Spain's super bantamweight champion Mary Romero defends her belt against unbeaten Italian Maria Cecchi. Some lovely grass there. <laughs> At Milan based world to Maxim Prodan looks to bounce back from the first defeat of his 21 fight career. He takes on Venezuela's Luis Romero. And kicking off the show, unbeaten cruiserweight prospect Oronzo Berardi is looking to make it win number four. He takes on the experienced Ovidio Inash. Yep. Ready to go, yep. to start let me know <laughs> Sandy by Yes, Daniel Scardina, who has become the flag bearer for Italian boxing in recent years, puts his unbeaten record on the line against domestic rival Giovanni De Carolis in front of his hometown fans. Fantastic looking European title fight on the undercard of Spain. Super Bantamweight champion Mary Romero defends her belt against the unbeaten Italian Maria Cecchi. Milan based welterweight Maxim Prodan looks to bounce back from the first defeat of his 21 fight career. He takes on Venezuela's Luis Romero. And kicking off the show, unbeaten cruiserweight prospect Oronzo Berardi is looking to make it win number four when he takes on the experienced Ovidio Inash. Chat with me and Darren up. Love you, mate. Cheers, Jordy. We'll be fine. Thanks. Wicked. See you there. Cheers, mate.
Chris. Hello, Darren Barker's Mike. Hello, Chris. How are you, mate? Nice one. Cheers, mate. Yeah, Chris is next. Uh, yeah, just me and Chris. No. Chris, level. Level, level, level. No, so I've got these ears. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. I'm on my Cheers, mate. mate. Yeah, lovely. Cheers. Okay, got you, Jim. And got you, Jordy. Good stuff. Thank you. Sure, Daniele Scardina coming up later on, top of the bill. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. It's now time for the featured bout of the evening. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this ring, the fight starts now! Yeah, wherever you're joining us around the world, a very warm welcome from Milan. Just three weeks after we were last here, it is time to do it all over again. There is the venue, the famous Allianz Cloud Arena, and already the crowds are filling up here. Plenty to come here on Before the Bell. Chris Lloyd and Darren Barker with you. As always, two fights before we kick off the main event on the zone. Daniel Reggie and Luca Barbesi will do battle and super middleweight division first up in just a moment's time. Then Joshua Moma, who was on the bill three weeks ago, is in action against Gabor Gorbix. This is the first fight of the night. Daniel Reggie and Luca Barbesi over four rounds at super middleweight. Reggie making his debut and done a few tickets as well. Both fighters ready to make their way to the ring, so we'll hand you over. Without further ado, to our master of ceremonies, Mr. David Diamante. All right. Signore e signore, buonasera e benvenuti a Milano, Italia, per una meravigliosa serata di pugilato. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome to Milan, Italy. We are live on the zone for a big night of boxing action. We begin tonight with a full round affair in the super middleweight division, set to make his ring walk. Please welcome Luca Barbesi. So lots of action. 
division to look forward to in Milan tonight. Danielle Scardina, top of the bill. We finish with the super middleweight division and we start here as well. Luca Barbesi from Fair Verona. In his way to the ring. He's 0-3, a fledgling circuit fighter. As you can see the crowds already starting to fill up here at the Allianz Cloud. And now, entering the arena, please welcome Daniele Reggie. Well, what a start and what a reception on his debut for Daniel Reggie. Been around the amateurs for a while, nice smooth boxer. And Darren, you were telling me just now, you heard he's done around 200 tickets. 200 tickets. I mean, what a great scenario to be making your pro debut on. You're adoring fans in your home city. Perfect. And then you get to see what the top two guys in your country have got in the 168 division later on tonight. Signore e signore, buonasera e buongiorno. Welcome to Milano, Italia, per una meravigliosa serata di pugilato. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome once again to Milan, Italy. We are here at the Allianz Cloud. We are live on the zone for a big night of boxing action. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing in association with Kerkis OPI since 82. We're sponsored by Incinta Vitalia, Leone, and J.D. Sports. All of tonight's bouts are sanctioned under the auspices of the Federazione Pugilistica Italiano. The supervisor is Mr. Alessandro Lelli. Introducing your two judges scoring this contest from ringside, all from Italy. Giovanni Fiorentino and Eros Rozza. And at the sound of the belt, your third man in the ring, also from Italy, scoring referee Giovanni Poggi. And now, ladies and gentlemen, four rounds of boxing scheduled in the super middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the white trunks with the gold trim. He scaled 75.8 kilos. Professional record, no wins, three defeats. Fighting out of Verona, Italia, Luca Barbesi. Barbesi. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He wears the solid black trunks. He scaled 75.3 kilos. Tonight, he makes his much-anticipated professional debut. Fighting out of Milano, Italia, Daniele Reggie. Reggie. Listen to me, remember what I told you in the dressing room. No rabbit punch, watch your head, stop break, step back. Touch your gloves and good luck. Well, Daniel Reggie looks wired and fired up for his debut in his home city of Milan. Very rare that you get crowds this size for young debutants, especially this portion of the bill. Sorry, I'm nudging you there, Chris. I saw the few. You did. <laughs> few asking for receipts, I'm sure. <laughs> but he's made a, a quick start here. Reggie at centre in. Well, you can see how he's uh, setting out to approach this fight on the front foot, letting the big shots go. You know, you usually see this from debutants, eager to impress their crowds. Good body shot there with the left hand from Reggie. Really, really fired up. <laughs> Making Barbessa work with him. 
and he's been stopped in his last two with Barbasi in three and then in four his last out in February and as you will know if he can really stick it on his man there is a chance of an early breakthrough and he's letting the hands go he looked tenser and wired and fired up before the first bell went no surprise at all with the crowd that have come to see him he's letting the hands go as he is yeah really really forcing himself onto Barbessi who keeps throwing back himself good work he's finished on the uppercut for three punch combination and they just close up first frantic minute of his debut Wait, as the seconds go past, Reggie will start to settle down a little bit. You can see he's so eager to impress, but he's leaving himself open at times. He's shown good variation, now he's mixing it up. That's a good body shot, left hand hurting, Chris. Barbessi wins there, and he's buckling at the waist, and there's a long time in the round, still over a minute to go here. Just smothering his work, Reggie in the corner. So he could to prove a point to the crowd. He's repping away, but Carpesi hung on, just managed to get himself back to centre ring. Can he give himself the space and time to see out the round here? He's neglecting the body, Reggie. That's the shot that hurt Barbesi in the first place. He's head hunting at the minute. That's a good left to the body, but credit to Barbesi. He's fighting back, he's giving it everything. Good work. Well, what a, a whirlwind round on his debut. But a man in black fires the right hand through again. Pass indietro, si fa colpire. Step back. Okay. Again, smothering his work. Reggie just needs to take that step back, get at arm's length. He's the bigger puncher out of the two. Oh! Good left uppercut from Barbessi. His game as he has been in his other contests, but when he lets the hands go, that's when he's been vulnerable. Just ties his man up again. Well, both will be tired as a lot of punches he's been thrown in his first. Well, just as we approach the three-minute mark of this first round, there it is. Well, wow, what a what an opening round here in Milan, and what a, a first round debut. Lui ha solo la scarica finale. I'm going to fight them all like that. We'll have to settle down and, and look back on this and, and know that. But wow, well, it's exciting, wasn't it? Well, look, you only get one debut, and he sold the 200 tickets plus tickets. So he's desperate to impress his home fans and pressure as well, isn't it? Lots of lots of pressure. I mean, look, there was some, there, there was a lot of good work there, but. I think he's just got to settle down slightly, allow the space to, to get the shots off. The body shot, you can see Barbessi wince in there. He certainly felt that one. Credit to him, he stayed on his feet and fired back himself. But there was a lovely, well-executed left to the body on that floating rib. Beautiful shot, but it was just Reggie closing the gap, just too eager to get the finish. <laughs> Still wide-eyed, Reggie still wants to come and start the second round as he finished the first, firing all guns blazing, Barbessi wants to stand and trade with him. Really good action, just what you want from a debut opponent as well, somebody that's going to take a bit, give a bit too, and he certainly is. Yeah, he's in there to win Barbessi, there's no doubt about that. He's not in there to survive, he's mixing fire with fire. It's just the strength, that more physical presence from Reggie is the difference at the minute. I guess the best shot selection as well, but massive respect to Barbessi. A lot of good work on the ropes. Well, just a slip as he stepped in there. Shot did land at the same time. You see his, his feet went just before the, the shot landed. The referee spotted that too, so on we go. And then oh, that under the, the elbow is what hurt him. In the first round, and Barbessi just gritted his teeth there, so close to going down, but he hung on. He's given himself just a, another moment to try and recover. He's got that right elbow pinned down by his side, but he's hurt here. And Daniel Reggie knows it too. Minute 50 on the clock. Oh, big one. Can he find one more left under the elbow?
brilliant response from, from Barbessi to smother, spoil and hold and try and fire back when he can. Didn't take the knee there, which would have been the easy option. He's chosen the path of most resistance and Daniel Reggie starting to breathe a little heavier yeah. now too. Yeah, Barbessi is certainly feeling the pace. Those body shots have taken the wind out of the sails. And getting pushed back now, but back comes Barbessi. Shows so much courage and bravery. Just loading up with everything, Reggie. Just need to take this thing out of the shots. Vary the pace and the power. Another left to the body. Well, Barbessi is having to go tight guard. When the debutant lets his hands go, but the moment he stops, he just tries to jump on him and maximise the, the moments where he wants to rest. Oh, I'd love a stinging left under the elbow. That's hurt him. He looks like he may not recover from this one. 40 on the clock. Can Reggie find a follow-up here again? Just smothering his work, Darren. Yeah, just getting far too close. This is that over-eagerness to get the, the finish. But every time he's landed that left to the body, he's hurt. Barbessi. Oh, it's only scheduled for, for four rounds, but it will feel like a long, long oh, way to go. For Barbessi, who takes a knee. Three stinging body shots over. These first two rounds have sunk in. He's dug in, but he had to go down there. And he has given himself a minute to recover, and he's going to need it as well. Yeah, he doesn't look... Too happy walking back to the blue corner there. He was certainly hurt numerous times that left to the body. Yeah, I'll be very surprised if this goes the distance. You see again the work. That was that was good work there. That was well executed. The right uppercut first, setting the trap, getting the hands up, and he dropped the left to the body. And this has been the problem, just smothering his work afterwards. You see that just round the elbow, the arm of Barbessi. Just missed the right hand follow-up as well on the way down. And showed lots of courage and bravery, Barbessi, but every time he is caught with that left to the body. I mean, they don't even look that big, some of the shots. I don't know if he's come into this fight with an injury, but certainly been troubled time and time again with that shot. So he's had the breakthrough on his debut. Can he get the job done? He's eager. He's a little raw and ready. But Barbessi, what a response at the start of round number three. Did not expect that. And well, that's been the pattern of his resilience through these first two rounds so far. And he is... Showing the man in front of him, I'm not going to go quietly here. And fair play to him. He might have just emptied the tank. I think, there, he may have. I think he may have. I think that may have been the last stand as Reggie now pushes him back. He's trying to oh, give himself space. There. The left hand under the elbow again. And down goes Barbessi for the second time. Inside three rounds, he looks to his corner. He's badly hurt here. And he hasn't got the time to recover as he did at the end of round two. It is all over. What a start to the professional career. With Milan's Daniel Reggie in front of 200 here in his home city. Well, he came out of the traps, and credit to the man in front of him. He met fire with fire, but he was outgunned. Well, that was an entertaining opener. Wasn't it? <laughs> it really. So it's nice, sometimes nice to ease yourself into the evening, not tonight. Exactly. Look, sometimes I kind of expect that when I see a debutant on the card, you know, especially one, like I said, has, has sold as many tickets as Reggie. They're just so excited to get underway and, and entertain their crowd and get their pro careers off. And uh, he done just that. I mean, there's lots and lots and lots to learn for this man. I mean... But he, he's really gamey. He's, uh, he's a winner for sure, as Barbessi is as well. Look, he gave everything there. That's where he emptied the tank. Well, you, you know his corner would have said to him, you've got, yeah. you've got one more round here. Show us what show us what you've got. And fair play, he gave it absolutely everything. It's those left hands under the elbow that were the hurtful shot. He found it in the first round. And, well, he found it three or four times. And every time, Darren, it, it, it was hurting. Yeah, that left uh, the body was certainly the shot that unraveled Barbessi. And look, he's going to be in some very exciting fights, Reggie. He's, uh, he's all action. He comes fighting on the front foot, trying to land big shots. But I think as uh, 
if you're in the corner of Reggie, you want him to, to learn, get behind the jab. You can't fight that all the time because you'll have a very, very short career. So lots, lots to learn, but a very, very exciting fight nonetheless. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Giovanni Poggi calls a halt to this contest. The official time of the stoppage, 50 seconds of round number three. Your winner by TKO, Daniele Reggie. High pace, high octane in front of a, a terrific crowd in his home city. Daniel Reggie gets a win in the third round on his pro debut and credit to the man in front of him, Luca Barbesi, because he fired back with everything he had, but it wasn't enough here tonight. And, well, whatever happens in this man's pro career, wherever his trajectory takes him, he will always remember this night tonight. I'd be absolutely over the moon with that. He'd be thrilled with his performance, the, the way he went. I mean, look, everyone on their debut wants to get the stoppage, uh, and, and he done just that. There's lots to learn, but yeah, his fans will go and very, very happy. Well, an exciting fighter. We'll have some potentially big nights ahead with him, as we will with the man who is headlining in Bilbao next weekend, the return of Kerman Leharaga. Kerman Leharaga, that's going to be a terrific fight with JJ Metcalf next weekend in Bilbao. Coming up next, got uh, plenty to look forward to on before the belt. Young Joshua Moma in against Gable Gorbix, eight rounder at middleweight. Before we head to the main card, on the zone around the world, starting on the hour, and uh, fighters are standing by backstage. So let's hand you back over to David Diamante. Ladies and gentlemen, we are set to go with our next contest. Eight rounds in the middleweight division. Set to make his ring walk. Please welcome the squirrel, Gabor Gorbitz. My name is Gabor Gorbitz. is a name that will be familiar to fight fans. He's been around for 10 years now as a pro. She had the ring with some very good fighters. Only really been the heavy-handed, decent fighters in and around world level who have stopped him over the years. And he can punch a bit himself. 26 wins, 26 defeats, 16 of his victories have come by way of knockout. And he gets some of the best uh, coming prospects in Britain over the last few years as well. Hassan and Dan Jikami, he took the distance. And now entering the arena, here is the undefeated Joshua in Moma. Momar brothers Joshua and Samuel were both in action three weeks ago. When we were over in Italy. Nigerian born brothers who made their way over to Italy when they were youngsters and have taken up boxing as a means of living. Both pretty good too, Darren. Shape up well, good balance shot selection no, you just want to start seeing a little bit more in terms of these guys going through the gears as they progress up through the levels that's well. all it is for me chris honestly very very pleasing styles on the eye box really really well behind the jab great distance control it's just that pace i want to see a bit more of well, 
ladies and gentlemen, from Milan, Italy, live on the zone, we are set to go with a special middleweight attraction. It's all being brought to you courtesy of Mr. Eddie Hearn of Matchroom Boxing in association with Kerkis OPI since 82. We're sponsored by Incenta Vitalia, Leone, and JD Sports. Introducing your two judges scoring this contest from ringside, both from Italy. Giovanni Fiorentino and Eros Rozza. And at the sound of the bell, your third man in the ring, also from Italy, scoring referee Giovanni Poggi. And now, ladies and gentlemen, eight rounds of boxing scheduled in the middleweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trunks with the red and white. He scaled 73.2 kilos. His professional record, 26 victories, 26 defeats, 2 draws, and 16 wins coming by way of knockout. Fighting out of Budapest, Hungary, please welcome the squirrel, Gabor Gorbitz. Gorbitz. And his opponent across the ring fighting out of the red corner. He wears the white trunks with the gold trim. He scaled 75.4 kilos. His professional record, a perfect one. 11 fights, 11 victories, three of them coming by way of knockout. He fights out of Nevada, Piemonte, Italia. Here is Joshua Inmoma. Inmoma. Italian, Ita Italian, Ita English, 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 okay. Okay. Buonasera, maestro. Buonasera. Buonasera. Buonasera, Noma. Joshua. Okay. Okay. Gentlemen, no rabbit punch. Watch your red. Stop back, step back. Touch your gloves and good luck. At the corner, please. How fresh is he feeling after victory over Nika Vajava over six three weeks ago? It was a fairly routine victory, Darren. Not the kind of fight that would have taken much out of Noma. Gorbix a little sturdier, though. You have to go some to, to get him out of there. As I mentioned, he has shared the ring with, with some of the best around over the last few years, and only really the, the heavy-handed fighters, guys on paper that you know can really punch, have, have managed to put a dent in him and, and get him out of there inside the distance. Yeah, uh, and one of those being Liam Williams. Uh, I see that he stopped Gorbitz in eight rounds, and he worked really, really hard taking Gorbix out of his comfort zone, worked the body really well. So I look at this fight, and I mean, yeah. and as good as and MoMA is, I don't know if he has the tempo to stop Gorbix, but going back to, to Joshua and Moma, very good fight. See how well he controls the distance. He's always at arm's length. He's always thinking. He's a very intelligent fighter. Just want to see him go through the gears a bit more. But look, he's still learning, still progressing. And um, I, I think in some ways, if I am felt like there should be more, it's only because I really rate him as a fighter. You see, now he's always thinking, what a lovely jab. You see the reflexes there, getting out of range. You just feel that you still there. Both the brothers are capable of, yeah. of, of a little bit more. It look at times as if they're boxing well within themselves, and well, it will be good at some point to see them step up and, and put under some pressure and, and how they respond in those moments. Gorbix, as you mentioned, being with some of the best Michael Sullivan as well, and Sam and Dan, Kieran Conway more recently. Anthony Fowler did stop him in, in five, and again, had to really dig him around to, to get him out of there. And Fowler was. Uh, a big 154 pounder it is an understatement. Liam Williams, too, as you mentioned. Yellow Usanov, Kevin Laharag, of course, who is in action in Bilbao next weekend. Stopped him in, in five, too. He well, knows how to handle himself. He does, and what I've noticed with Gorbix, he, he, he's very fit, though you probably wouldn't think it. He can move like this all night long. So you need to put him under real pressure to try and get him to wilt and fold. But you see the speed there, the, the counter punching from. The MoMA, very, very good. See the variation as well. Jab to the head, right hand to the body, mixes up so well. And I, I look at him as a fighter. I think he would be what well, the only way that you could beat him, or one of the ways that you could beat him, was outworking him, yeah. being busier than him. He, he was able to match you for tempo. He's a very, very fight, a hard fighter to beat. Just calmly stalking 
Gorbic just turns the, the knuckle over on that right hand. The bulk of the impact is taken on the gloves. Lovely sharp jab. So accurate as well. And Moma gets caught with the left hook there from Gorbic. Five minutes we kick things off. Really good European title fight, Mary Romero, who dispatched of Amy Timlin in her first European challenge. Then against Maria Cechi, who we got a first look at live last time against Beck Conley. At the back end of last year, very impressive young Southport. She's gonna have to go some to become European champion. That's the chief support tonight. For Giovanni De Carolis challenges Danielle Scardina. De Carolis dredge up one last big performance. Will the night belong to the man they call King Toretto? That's all coming up here in Milan live on the zone. If you just joined us, you're listening to Chris Lloyd here with Darren Barker. Welcome. And as always, uh, head of a, a good night of boxing here in Italy. Russia Moma just takes a right hand to the body from Gorbix and just steps around outside the the outside of the ring. Yeah, controlling this. And Moma. He's got Gorbix exactly where he wants to be. Though in the fights I have seen of Gorbix, he does like to rotate. It's a lovely one too. Straight down the middle. I think uh, going back to that Liam Williams fight, I think the way he approached it, working the body, tried to slow Gorbix down and he did just that. Body eighth round, he was gone, I think. We've seen how good of a body puncher Joshua and Moma is, so I expect to see some more body shots as these rounds go by. Cut that ring down, try and pin Gorbix onto the ropes, into the corner, then let his hands go. Good right hand over the lazy jab of Gorbix. Yeah, well, he just looked for a left hook catch counter, which missed moments before. Landed with the right hand, then just follows up with a raking right hand just under the left elbow. Gorbix felt that. This is good from Moma, his educated pressure. Not exactly going through the gears like I was asking for, but there's more pressure on the front foot now, making Gorbix move a lot more. Sticks the tongue out at Gorbix, who just overcommitted and came a little square. Missed with his own right hand, and Moma was sharp on the on that pull counter. Yeah, you see that one coming from Gorbix, loading up with the right hand. Obviously, the rear hand adds further to travel. And when you're in there with someone as quick, not just with their hands, with their feet, like Moma is, you will get countered. So he's got to be careful of that Gorbix, but that was beautiful boxing. Could have made him wary now of uh, jumping in as he did there because he was caught straight down the middle and that will cause some sensitivity a bit of hesitation again moment just steps in behind the jab just lets him out the the side door that time so a couple of meaningful right hands have connected in this second round, and Joshua Momo, as we expected, in full control through two. Yeah. 
History. Pretty good fighters from Nigeria. Emigrated and furthered their boxing careers. Dick Tiger, of course, one of the best fighters in the continent's history. Went stateside after a period in Liverpool. Aikabir Bucci, likewise. Had that stand-up win over David Tua. Henry Akin one day. He was born in London to Nigerian parents. Ronzo Berardi and Ovidio Nash are going to kick us off on the zone in just under 45 minutes' time. Berardi, a six time German and one time European champion as a youth. Maxim Prodan in action tonight as well. Lots to look forward to, all coming up on the main show, on the hour. Just Momo here, just starting to crank things up as... lands another right under the elbow. Gorbik's just on the move again. Yeah, the start of this third round, he started to go through the gears a little bit. The free punch combination there was good work. Follows it up and another three shots. Looking a bit more spiteful here. much coming back from Gorvik's now every time he throws he's countered with sharp combinations throws a right hand then nearly gets caught with a left hook yeah tried to punch with him didn't even he knows he's just well undersized in, in the contest as well just tries to step in take his head off the line behind that jab because he knows the right hand is he's coming on a hair trigger but to see and Moma throw the uppercut a little bit more try and draw Gorvik's in and throw that right uppercut it's definitely a good shot to throw against the shorter man who comes in over that front foot. Yeah, just look for a little guard pull down there mm. as well with the, with the lead hand. Norvik's kept the hands high and, and, and solid, though. Be interesting to see and Moma in there with someone that has a high tempo, a high, a high work rate. See how he would deal with that kind of pressure. Would he mix fire with fire? Would he get on his bike? Good counter puncher, mm. natural counter puncher, you'd say. Sometimes almost to the point of being slightly yeah. too patient. If someone was giving him opportunities, letting the hands go, you feel like you'd, it would bring something a little more out of him. So within his comfort zone at this point. Just caught with a little short right there, but just fires back in combinations. To left that Gorbic's reasonably tight defensively and, and a small target to aim for as well. Momo just trying to work his way in behind his feints with the, the left hand. Gorbic's again just pinned into the next corner, trying to feint his way out, find a, an exit left and right, just keep Momo off balance. But he's getting a little closer now. Yeah, he just does not stop moving, Gorbic. See why he's only been stopped seven times. Out of the 26 losses, very, very fit, knows how to survive. And like you said, Chris, only the best have stopped him. Deep breaths from Gorbix, who knows the danger that lies in over committing, stepping in in straight lines. It's been countered a couple of times on a sharp left. Catch left hook and then the, the right hand that landed a few minutes ago. He's well in control. I think if Gears went in halves, that would sort of sum up how he slowly goes through the gears, you know, bit by bit. But that was better from a Moma. Picking the shots really well, like you say, very, very comfortable in control of the space, the distance. He's got Gorbitz exactly where he wants him. So that's a bit more variation. He's definitely got it in his locker. Just 
set up that right uppercut, follow it up with the left hook, then drop to the body. You see there how quickly he gets out of range with those feet. Beautiful jab, the one-two. This is probably not a bad tactic here. Try and draw Gorbix in. We've seen already when he throws his shots, he falls over the front foot, so he is wide open. But when he's moving, he's very difficult to pin down, as you see here. Moves away from the corners. Very crafty, very experienced fighter. to manufacture openings, just mix the, mix the variation of the pace and shots up, just tapping lightly with that jab, looking for the big right hand round the side of the guard, looking for those guard pull downs all the while, just arcs the, the right hand round the side that time. And Gorbix knows that, mm. and he, it's almost his opportunity to catch a breather. You know, he's always threatening to throw that right hand, and that sort of stops the MoMA from throwing the shots and really committing, so that's showing the experience again from Gorbix. Gorby just keeping that right hand tight for the catch left return. He's showing, as you say, the experience. A little bit of blood, just yeah. a, a nick above the uh, the left eye. Yeah. One of the, the right hands that just darted around the side of the, the glove. We, we, may, we may have a look at that in between rounds, I'm not too sure, but it doesn't look like he's troubling him at all at this point. Stiff jab. Again, you see in MoMA just slightly cranking it up again, ever so slightly. More pressure on the front foot, making Gorbix move, trying to tire the older man out. Oh, that's a lovely left to the body. Pick that really well. Suddenly comes back from Gorbix and Momar staying twitched on, just taking the feet back with him, stepping out of range and straight back on him. Just caught a little short right hand there. Is it like his legs moved for a second there? Wow, suddenly Gabriel Gorbix is, is in the fight. 20 seconds to go, round number four, and he's Momar just a little bit buzzed there. I'm sure I see the legs stiffen ever so slightly. Blinking with the eyes as well. I was just about to say, unless something unbelievable happens, I think we need to see and Momar step it up now. And then in comes the big right hand from well, Gorbic. Well, the last thing that we were expecting, probably the last thing he was expecting, was a little short, choppy counter right hand, but his body language says that he felt it. Well, he said it at the top, Chris. I mean, he can't punch at 16 KOs on his 26 wins, so obviously he does carry a bit of power, loads up with the shots when he lets them go. He doesn't sort of poke them out when he throws them, especially that right hand. He puts everything into it, and let's have a look now. Well, that was, that was no more. I think just after it landed, stepping off and just tucking up. Yeah, Gorbix. Gorbix knew, didn't he, that he'd buzzed him slightly. Just wasn't quick enough to, to land the big shots. Okay. Let's see how Gorbix approaches the start of this round. Yeah, will he take a few risks here? <laughs> just a little moment, just a little glimmer of hope for the man in the away corner. That can happen, Chris, you know, when you, you're having things your own way and you, you're in cruise control. You can get a bit complacent and you can switch off. And as we know in boxing, it only takes a split second and your career can be turned upside down. So it's another lesson from Momar as he progresses in his career to, to understand that got to be on it every second of every round. He looks switched on, he looks focused now at the start of this fifth round. It does change that posture from kind of traditional guard to, to a little bit Philly shell. With that left hand across the body and the right hand a little low. With that left hand low, as he does step in, just sometimes if you don't time the, the shoulder roll, the chin isn't tucked down, you, you can be vulnerable when stepping into range like that. 
it's uh, it's a fine art. He's keeping it a little tighter now. Moment, just touching the guard with the jab, just to occupy the hands of Gorbix, trying to give himself space to work. He's just been a little hesitant in this round, Moment. Yeah, he has. Certainly, when he's got. Gorbic's backs into the corner on the ropes. That's when you want to let your hands go. You've done the hard work closing the ring down, so let the shots go. And he's a little wary. Problem with being a circuit fighter, Darren, I'm sure. You have spoken to, to many in Gorbic's position. Sometimes you can get an opening, but of course, you know your role and your reputation is to come. And, and take these fighters through a good workout. Really, the role isn't to win, and if you do cause a, an upset of a, of a talented prospect, sometimes you don't get asked back. And this is your this is your weekly bread and butter. For Gorbix, though, it's a it's a big moment for him. I just wonder whether his ambition is such that well, do I really want to go and upset the odds and potentially take food off off my table for these next few weeks? You just don't know what's going through his head. And he's a little busted up now. That nick above the the left eye seems to have just slowed the bleeding but there is now blood coming from the nose of the Hungarian and a, a solid right hand just comes around the side of the guard then one straight down the middle from Momo just starting to take back the control that he had throughout the first four rounds of this contest before he was clipped and Gorbic's just trying to fire back with him yeah you can see the blood coming from the nose of Gorbic and it's coming from the jab of a Momo and very accurate like I say with that shot as he does again there once again in cruise control c'hai l'opportunità avevi l'opportunità John hai fatto 5 round di merda non pensare questo qui che gira tu che non, non riesci a chiudere oh gira John gira di qua di là fai il testo dai un megalo al mio vera più lui di buono io non ti sbocchiare io ti dico Okay. Are you good? Yes. Are you good? Okay. Joshua, you too many? See you later. Okay. So into the sixth round of eight. The second and final contest on before the bell here in Milan before we kick off proceedings in half an hour's time live on the zone around the world. Scardina and Giovanni De Carlos will be battling the 168 pound division. Maria Cechi will challenge Mary Romero for her European title in our chief support. Maxim Prodan on the bill, too. All to come. Double jab right hand it rips the left of the body. Just starting to put a little bit more spice on these shots now. Every time Gorbic just steps off, finds the exit, just forcing the home fighter to reset. Moment just calmly stalking, just working behind that jab. Good balance on, on all the straight shots yeah. too. Never falls over that front foot. Yeah, very centered. Like you say, never falls over the front foot. Well scored fighter, lovely left to the body there. Nice. Body language says he thinks he hurt Gorbix with that. Just sped the feet up, followed him around with it. Just works the other side of the body that time. Right hand down the middle is Gorbix. Just a little bit trouble here. Hungarian just trying to fire back with the jab. He did catch and Moma with a right hand as well. He's into trouble and Moma. That was better pressure. Just didn't let his hands go enough. I start to see him, he's got a beautiful jab, Joshua and Momo. Just throw it more often. You know, if you're not going to be busy with your combination punching, be busy with the jab. Nice, right to the body. 
right under the elbow of Gorbic. He took it well. Put the right hand down the middle as well. The Hungarian just backed into the corner. 40 seconds to go in round number six. Misses with the right hand, just fell over the front foot. Moma not able to take advantage that time. He's waiting for his moment, Moma, and Gorbic's now starting to look busted up. There's a possibly a cut over the other ride. There's certainly blood around it. Yeah, the face a mess now. Swelling under the right eye, busted nose, that nick over the left. Gorbic just tried to, to punch with him. Two punch combination comes off the glass at the right hand, got through there. Gorbic's looked for the return and he sees six through. He's looking tired, looking weary. The face is, is busted up and in contrast that man. Russian Beaumont looking mature of composure. I mean, how good does Enmoma look when he puts those vicious combinations together? He looks spiteful, he looks aggressive, sharp, but I don't know what's going on here, Chris, in the corner of Gorbix, as we see the replay here. There's a lot of talk going on. Well, he really started to, as you say, sit down on the shots, put more meat behind the, the punches. The right hand, I think, in this combination, got through the middle. And Mouse really starting to appear under the, the right eye. Right, there's been a lot of mm. discussion in that corner. Not sure what it's in relation to. Gorbic says he's OK to carry on, so into the seventh we go. Just sense it. Just get out those feelings, don't you, that if Moma really put his foot down here, he can get the stoppage. Stiff jab. And that right eye really starting to, to swell up, and the referee will have to have a look at that. And these singles are, are audibly louder than they were in the first five or six rounds. Moma really trying to put a dent in the man in front of him. He's going to stop him. He's got to do it now. He's got to go through the gears. He's got to put his foot on the gas. Gorbix is struggling. You can see the face. He's breathing heavy. A lot of conversation in the corner. He's using all his experience to try and he mask is. the fact that he is struggling. But you watch enough of this stuff from up close. You know when you know. And he is really having to, to dig in here. Just tries to fire a right hand on the elbow. There's nothing in the shots now, really. And Maybe the wind has been taken out with sales some really well-placed shots under the elbows these last two or three rounds and hurtful shots down the middle too from Lomar. It's been arcing the right hand as well, which has caused the, the cut over the left eye. A little catch and counter left hooks, which may have caused the cut over the right eye as well and the mouse that's underneath it too. And Gorbix did find something that just momentarily shook Lomar up three or four rounds ago just the sense that he is out of ideas and out of gas here and that moment isn't going to come again it is boxing of course anything can happen but it doesn't look likely to at this stage of the contest it is Momar's to do what he wishes yeah Gorbitz has slowed down now when he had that success with that shot earlier as we see a beautiful jab again from a Moma yeah he's certainly slowed down he's in survival mode now and this is where you want to see Joshua Moma really go through the gears let his shots go. It is good educated pressure on the front foot. Just want to see a bit more. Good left up as Gorbic retreats. Yeah, he had the he had the right hand up. I think that snuck through, you know. And he's once again backed into the corner. 40 seconds in the penultimate round. And Moma lets the hands go. Gorbic finds the exit, but not for long. Finds himself boxed into the corner. Just fights his way out. Gives himself a valuable bit of breathing space and time. Really having to, to work hard here, Gorbic, but Moma not pressing him maybe as much as he needs to to really, really test where he, has, he is in terms of his, his gas tank and his resilience. Nice combination there. It's a couple to the front of the guard, look for the heavy ones behind. And under the elbows, and Gorbix does see out the seventh round. He is absolutely exhausted, Darren. 
Yep, he's certainly earned his money. He's tried, he's moved. But complete survival oh, mode now. What's that? Just see the, the face of Gorbix there as he screams something. I think he's asking for that final bell. Yeah, it's been a good performance from Unmoma. The only thing lacking is the tempo again. I don't want to sound like a broken record all the time, but as well as uh, talking about a fighter's positives, their strengths, I've also got to pick up on their weaknesses. And his weakness is certainly pace and tempo, but awful, awful lot to like with Joshua and Moma, there really is. So eighth and final round here. Our final contest on before the bell, before we head to the main card live on the zone. At the top of the hour, just over 20 minutes from now. Just had a glimpse, Chris, sorry, of uh, Daniel Scardina. Oh, I wasn't sure who it was. I saw the hooded figure effect. and you, you nudged me, but uh, yeah. will be in action a little later on tonight. Can Giovanni De Carolis dredge something up? The really good fights with Vincent Feigenbutz, Tyron Zoiga. A little bit past his prime years now. But he was back to winning ways. Two wins on the spin after that comprehensive defeat to Lerone Richards last year. Scardina will be there to be hit in ways that Richards wasn't. But Scardina is also more likely to put a dent in him in a way that Richards wasn't either. No doubt the Brit will be watching tonight to scout some future competition as Moma just putting the hands together with just over a minute 30. On the clock in the final round, Gorbix again just doubles the, the jab up, right hand to the body behind it, and has to tuck up for the return. He's done really well to get through these last couple of rounds. He has. Been a lot of pressure from a MoMA. For a lovely right up and right left hook combination from the centre of the ring. Again, not troubling Gorbix. He's putting some miles over these eight rounds, that's for sure. out several times this year already fighting fit he knows how to take care of himself and he's done very very well to negotiate some difficult moments over these last couple of rounds in particular after having a decent moment in the middle round himself Moma just perhaps let him off the hook in these last six minutes he's got 40 seconds to really try and put a dent in him and, and get a stoppage jab through the middle Gorbix just stuck in the corner, but again, just lets him yep. out the side door a little too often, perhaps. Momar, his feet are, are pretty good when he's stalking. Mirrors the, the footwork of Gorbix, cuts the ring off well, makes the space small, but after a rally, just tends to let him out. Left. Gives him that space to move, and there it is again. This is good work from Joshua and Momar. Emptying the tank in this last round, putting them together, and very pleasing on the eye when he does that. Gorbis missing on the right hand, just keeps the hands high and tight. Moma puts them together one last time in the eighth. Gorbis raises his hand in uh, the probably pride that he's stuck out. Some difficult rounds in the second half of the contest. For Moma, really in control for the whole contest, bar about 30 seconds towards the end of one of the middle rounds. But uh, an interesting moment for him just to experience the first time he's experienced anything like that as a professional fighter and, and it's important isn't it yeah of course it is i mean it's another box ticked on the the journey so far the progression and the apprenticeship of joshua and moma another good performance showing he's a he's a level above this caliber of opponent so i think it's time now to step him up i'd love to see him in there with a guy that's really going to come in and set the pace and, and try and win the contest but i'm a big fan of joshua and moma i really am i think when i look at him uh, as a fighter i think there's an awful lot to work with i think maybe some some top class sparring around europe 
in the UK, even go to America. But Scardina has. We're hearing rumours as well that uh, Ivan Zuko, we saw three weeks ago, may be heading over to work with somebody that you know very well. Yeah, Tony Sims. Uh, I'm hearing he may be travelling over to do some sparring and, and, and work with Tony. And I think something similar for Joshua and Momar would really, really improve his development and his progression as a fighter. Because there is an awful lot yeah. to work with, Chris. And I think there are enough UK trainers that, that would have a look at him and his, his brother and say, yeah, there's definitely, as you say, enough to work with here and an opportunity to, to do something with these boys if they've got the ambition, the, the work ethic and everything else. We'll see what the future holds for... Young Joshua Momut, who no doubt is on his way to a unanimous decision victory, but we will leave the official particulars to RMC, who is standing by with the scorecards. Let's head over to David. Ladies and gentlemen, after eight rounds of boxing here in Milan, Italy, we go to the judges' score totals. They all read the same 80 to 72, but your winner by unanimous decision, he's still undefeated. Joshua Moma. It's a gallant effort from Gable Gorbix, but was unanimous for Joshua Moma. And that moves him to 12 0 as a professional. draw to uh, a close here on before the belt is brother Samuel in the corner with him out three weeks ago as well no doubt he'll be out in the coming months to moved over from West Africa to further their their lives and their boxing careers as did Joshua Boazzi when he was a boy culminated in a, a fabulous Olympic bronze medal in 2016 and next weekend in London he faces the test of his career so far as a professional. It's simple. May 21st. Let's have it. I believe I'm number one. I'm ready to prove it. Let's go. It's not if, it's a win. I win this fight, and I know I win this fight. We're at the crossroad now, where they've been banging on about this guy for a while. With me, I've been delivering. Simple as. I have a belief about myself, and that's what it is. Your ego is your downfall. I don't care, bro. May 21st, we're gloving up. It's one on one. We're going to find out who the best is. Wherever I have to be, I will be. In that ring, I find a way. To find a way, what do you mean? Do you know what it means? Winning. Now let me handle that. This is my city. This is my division. Time to show the real top boys. You already know. Twenty-first next weekend in London, Joshua Boatsy and Craig Richards. Boatsy, after dispatching of. Richard Bolotnik, who was in such brilliant form in the golden contract in the months preceding, and Craig Richards, who boxed so brilliantly in defeat to Dimitri Bibble. A real pick and fight, bragging rights in South London next weekend, live on the zone. But coming up here in Milan tonight, plenty of action to look forward to. That's what we've just had on before the bell, Danielle Reggie. Uh, really good performance on his debut. It was a frantic three rounds, defeating Luca Barbesi by a stoppage in front of 200 that he brought here to kick things off and Joshua and Moma was comfortable in the end over Gable Gorbix winning over eight rounds at middleweight. That was 